Hey, good evening, everybody. How you doing? It's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop on a Sunday evening blog. All right. Well, first of all, to all our new folks coming on, a happy New Year's to you, and I hope that all of you had a uh, you had a great weekend. I hope your weather was a little bit warmer than ours because, yeah, we've been dealing with uh, negative numbers for about three weeks now. It's getting old. <laughs> okay. What do we have for you this week? This week we have CNC fabricated winter bird roosting boxes, which is what you see before us, okay? So why fabricate our feathered friends a roosting box in the first place? If you've been outside in the winter months, you know how cold it can get. We are absolutely in a freezing, horrifying situation up here in the northeast right now. Okay, far northern regions have temperatures that are life-threatening to humans as well as animals. This is why we fabricate roosting boxes. It gives our little, our little bird friends a fighting chance in those frigid winter months. Birds are social creatures and they flock together. We've, we've all seen many of the same species eating together at our feeders. Even different species will intermingle with one another. So there is a social pecking order, if you would, to our little avian friends. Not all species migrate south to the warmer regions for the winter. Well, I can tell you right now, if I had wings on my back, some of you would probably be seeing me from the Sunshine State to Texas to maybe the southern coast of uh, California, because, okay, these species, they're grateful for our help. Backyard feeders are fun to watch in the winter months, and different diets are going to attract different species. CNC fabricated winter bird roosting box which is what we have right here, okay? As CNC owners and operators, we design and build one-of-a-kind projects. I've told each and every one of you, we can take existing designs and we can make anything better. We can engrave it, we can personalize it. We can paint it, stain it, we can decorate it however we see fit or our clients see fit. And now it is nothing that can be purchased in a chain retail store. You have created a one-of-a-kind piece, all right? A roosting box is no different. They have a specific function, and when built and decorated, they will add a beautiful piece of lawn art to your property. We, uh, we include a bunch of files, which we're going to go into a little bit more in depth tomorrow. We did a small package so that you can engrave, say, a species, maybe a cardinal or a a nuthatch or a woodpecker or something like that. I gave you about six or eight different bird, common winter bird species uh, in the download project file, which in the blog you can, uh, you have a download link to go and get them, all right? What is a roosting box exactly? Okay, it's not to be confused with a bird house. A roosting box is not meant to nest in, it's meant to roost in. No more than a, a bird house, it's a nesting device. It's not something that a, a bird will roost in. It's meant to have, a, have your offspring in, okay? The hole placement on a roosting box, which is, this is our roosting box that we, we put together today. We have not put the hole in, nor have we fully assembled it yet, because I wanted you to be able to see it internally, okay? Well, on a roosting box, your hole's going to go down low. Your birds will come in low, and as they fill up, They'll pile inside this thing. And we've got a bunch of sticks inside, or a bunch of quarter-inch dowels that go back and forth, and they're staggered. We're also going to incorporate a little clean-out on the bottom of this. One thing that we will do is, before I hang this out, is I'll put a nice little layer of shavings. And the one thing I can tell you is, at the end of the season, when you do go to empty your boxes, every now and then, you're going to find one or two chickadees, or some type of little birdie that did not make it, okay? In this... In this project package, or I should say in the blog, excuse me, we gave you two outbound links to two very, very simple projects. The project you see in front of you is off of the vertical download. I had to revamp it a little bit because of the materials that I'm using up here, but nonetheless, this is built all on a five-quarter composite decking board. Now, I've told many of you in the past that I have family that are in the trades, so I get all their scrap material. Well, I'm going to take 24 to 32 inch pieces of composite decking. And this is some of the stuff that we do with it up here, okay? This is going to be a maintenance-free box, basically. 
The horizontal ones, I'm going to have to wrap my head around a little bit more, but we will, uh, we will give you some step-by-step -step on those as well. This was really simple to build. Like I said, the, uh, the PDF, you can actually download and print it out. It's a single piece of paper, and this particular design is called uh, uh, on a single 1x8x8 uh, cedar board. It even tells you exactly how much dowel you'll need and exactly how many number seven uh, screws you'll need. Everything's right there though. Simple, simple to build, but an awesome project. Okay, placement. I told you in my case, I'm going to put this up in the facade. The facade up the front of the shop gets a nice full day sun. It even gets an afternoon sun. It's going to help to heat the box up. It's going to be under the cover of the facade. My northerly prevailing winds are off the back side of the shop, so the structure is going to actually break any wind. The hole is going to be on the front. It's going to offer some really great protection for our little birds. Now, most of these will go 60 to 15 feet up, depending on your species, depending upon your location and where you live. Try to keep an eye on where you place them, though. I want to keep them holes, the entryway holes that will be down low. Uh, try to keep them out of the prevailing winds. You know, there's nothing worse when you open your front door in the winter and you get a, get a big blast of cold there. All right. Keep an eye out for predation. Some people mount these on poles, sometimes 4x4s. Four four you may want to put some baffles or something. You don't want to see a little, uh, a little mink or ermine climb up there, and the next thing you know, he's scooping all your birds out of your house. You can paint these, you can stain the exteriors, seal the outside of it, it's going to last you for years. Do not apply anything to the interior. If the birds come inside, they smell adhesives, paints, caulking, any of it, they're probably not going to bother with it. And then what will happen is a squirrel may come along, chew a big hole in the front of it, and now you've got a squirrel house, okay? You may want to, depending on some species, let me, let me lightly disassemble this. This is the back. We're going to get more into the construction of this uh, in another video. I basically, uh, on the backs of these, if you wanted to add more traction, you could get a piece of wire screen and probably just take a staple gun and staple it on and a little, the smaller birds could climb up it. Again, it's just two pieces of five-quarter decking board. It's got the nice, clean, radius edge. I took one side, we ripped it off. A Craig's jig, put in everything that we needed, we fastened this together. I told you I didn't want to use any type of adhesives or silicones, uh, no glues. I didn't want anything that these little birds could smell, kind of freak them out and make them fly off. So, the interior of this, again, I haven't, uh, I haven't put the, the hole in the front door yet, but Here's our back, and we have the little sticks, the little quarter inch dowels, I got one more to put in, but we stagger them. Three inch, two inch, three inch, two inch, you get the idea. And basically they just go back and forth, back and forth. This is, uh, has an overall height of 24 inches it, in and of itself. From here to here is 18, and it's 10 inches wide. The back's a little bit longer. It'll be applicable for a hanging hole up top. We cut everything to the same pitch as the roof. We put the nice bevel so it'll line up flush. There's our roof. The other thing I decided to do with this design was we put a little, little feeding tray here so our little birds, friends, they can land, they can have a bite to eat. They can go inside and crash for the night before they hit the rack. They can have a nice, nice belly, you know, nice, uh, nice meal in their belly. All right. Again, I'm going to get more into how we built this and put this one together. We basically just wanted to give you the introduction tonight on the project and what it was because it is getting so late. But you guys stay tuned. We, we have a lot more to come. And uh, the project files are there for download. We will also give you, excuse me, I will give you a small clip. I think in some screen capture software, we'll give you a small clip just how to pull it in, how to design out the area, or how to lay out an area if you in fact wanted to engrave this. Now I told you again, 
I'm using scrap materials that are kicking around just to save money on the projects, but you know, this is one that I wish I hadn't have put off because it really would have been handy weeks ago for these little guys to be able to get in out of the cold. What species are you going to attract? I am no bird expert. I don't claim to be. Uh, we have a link for the uh, National Auburn Society. I think that they are, they are some of the world's best experts there as far as species identification, what you can find in your area. We have an outbound link for you there you can click on if you enjoy watching the birds. We do what we can to help everybody out up here. You know that by now, I hope. Even if it comes down to the animals in the woods and the little, little guys that fly in the trees, we do our part to try to, uh, to try to help them out. Like I told you, it has been almost a month of below zero temperatures up here, and Saturday night alone it was almost 40 below zero. So I can't wait to get these on to help out our, our little bird friends, okay? All right, everybody, I will not keep you any further. Guys, stay tuned. We got the remainder of this coming up. We're gonna uh, we're gonna basically walk you through real quick, and I'll show you the horizontal ones once I have them built because they are in fact gonna be going up atop the facade. All right, on our big uh, on our big support beam overhead. So as always, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope everybody got out. Hopefully, it didn't freeze too bad. Got to spend some time with the family and do some real fun stuff. Uh, please have a safe week. I think the weather for us is going to start warming up. Hey, we're going to see the 30s this week. <laughs> you, uh, everyone have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday for the midweek shout-out. Be careful. Be good. Get home safe to you and yours. And uh, we'll catch you Wednesday. All right, everyone. Have a great night. See you later. Bye-bye.